Hello, my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. So today, I'm doing a little bit of work in the garage here, and uh, if you uh, watched a couple of my last videos, I was working on the Yamaha Super Tenere, my motorcycle I took on a journey to Alaska, Canada, and all across the U.S. I'm getting it all serviced up after all that riding. So I um, put it on the lift last, uh, the last major video I did, and did an oil change and then uh, took it off and changed the tires. And one of the remaining things that I had left to do was to change the air filter because I did not have it. Well, right after I made that video, the next day, let's see here, got my filter. Air filter showed up. So, I need to clear a little bit of space in the garage here. We'll probably just put it in the middle. Um, put it on the lift. Putting that big bike on the lift by yourself is not easy. Um, it's not really all that difficult to get it on the lift. It is more difficult getting it off. This front wheel chalk is really nice for holding the bikes. If you look at it, it has this kind of a basket, I guess you'd call it, and that lays down. And then when the wheel rolls over it, it keeps the front wheel kind of locked in there. Well, trying to rock the big bike off of there is not easy and I almost dropped it. I kind of wish I would have videoed that. That would have been a pretty nice blooper reel to put at the end. But I didn't and y'all didn't get to see it and I didn't drop it. But uh, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Got to get uh, hydrated here. It's a vital thing about uh, getting stuff done in the garage. And I'll move some of this stuff out and get the bike in the middle. We'll get started. So we got the bike moved in the middle here. The first step to getting the air filter off of the Super Tenere is uh, taking the seat off. And then you have to pull this uh, plastic cover off here. As always, working with one hand here. And exciting camera action with the other there we have four and these are quarter turn fasteners now if you got a Yamaha Super Tenere with these uh, aftermarket crash bars this piece might not come out as easily as it should but not too bad and then we have to pull that bolt out on this side but I gotta get the other side off. Let's see if we can get a camera angle going where I don't have to hold it. Oh yeah, this new tripod is pretty nice. This side has I think four as well. These are not quarter turn fasteners. This one down here, I know the pain in the butt to get back in. But I've got this uh, Allen wrench here that's got a kind of a ball head on it. And now it's being a pain to get out of there. Let's just put it in a little bit here. So, hopefully it'll focus on that. It's got the ball, ball head on there, so you can kind of get at different angles on these items here. Hopefully my fat head's not blocking the shot here. socket on our Allen wrenches is they're very easy to strip stuff out with. They're nice to get into a tight area, but something is torqued down pretty hard. 
you just don't provide as much surface area. And you can trip stuff out. Alright, so I would get some double-sided tape to put my light switch down on. Alright, so this is coming off. I could maybe take this other one off or I could just probably get in here. I'll show you. You can get in there enough to get that one. So let me take a guesstimate as to what size these are. The little mechanic's eyeball is off by one, it looks like. Oh yeah, there you go. And to hold this out with one hand anyway, I can hold it out with one hand and hold the camera at the same time. Alright, so I'm gonna go loosen up the other side. This one's a little bit easier to access because the entire panel is off. I think I took that other panel off one other time when I did this, maybe when I was doing the valve adjust and I just determined that it's kind of more of a pain in the butt to take the entire thing off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these off while I set the camera down and uh, we'll come back after I got them out. Both the bolts are now out. Oh, got those. Oh yeah, let me grab. These things are nice to have right here. It's a little magnetic bowl. And then you can just stick that anywhere you want. Like you can stick that right to the tank if you wanted to. Anyway. I use uh, butter tubs as well quite often. It's a mechanic thing. So next item you gotta do is to loosen up this pivot bolt back here. It's 12 millimeter. Now I intentionally, I'll show you. I intentionally waited until I was almost out of fuel because now the tank will be lighter. So I shouldn't even have to remove the entire tank. Let's see if we can get the tripod stood up here somewhere well i'll just hold on to it for now it should just pivot up as soon as i remove one more thing don't forget about that this is for my driving lights right here it's a relay but leave that on, it will, see even on there, if I leave that on there, it'll rip the wiring right off, so, should be able to unplug it, in a perfect world, there we go, there we go, alright, now, Ta-da. Now here's the air box right here. So I should be able to get this without removing the tank, but if I have to, it's not all that hard. A couple of plugs. But for now, we're just going to hook it up here one way or another. So let me rest it there for now. And I'll figure out how we're gonna hold the tank up. All right, so once you get the tank up, and I'll show you how I held this here in just a minute. Your air box is right underneath here, and all the way around the outside of it, there are screws that you need to take out. I've taken most of them out already here because how exciting is it to watch a, watch a guy in his garage unscrewing some screws from an air box. But uh, if you go around it, there's nine, nine screws around the perimeter of this thing. Now, if it's your first time ever doing this and, and you do stuff sort of like I do or you have a manual, but uh, you look into it after the fact, you'll realize that after you take nine of them out, it still doesn't want to come off because, let me 
Let's see if I'm even on this here for you. Right in the center, there's a rubber plug that you have to pull out. Set that aside. And then you'll need a longer screwdriver. You just kind of have to feel around in there if you don't have your light and you're trying to shoot a video in your garage with the door open and it's 125 degrees in here. But I'm doing it for you, YouTubers. There's a screw right in the center. And then once you get that out, that is the 10th and final screw holding this air box on. Let's see if we can position this a little bit better. Move some stuff, look at that. And there you have it. And when you tip the air box upside down, you'll tip that last screw out. And this is your air filter right here. Now those of you who watched my videos, you saw that I had ingested a lot of water through this filter and I didn't get one on order in time. So I just did my best to dry it out in the sun in Anchorage. And it did dry out okay, but I'm sure the water didn't do good things for it. And then I proceeded to ride another 12,000 miles on this filter. But this side, this is a dirty side, looks like crap. And this is the side that's going into the intake runners here, and it looks pretty good. And there's a small amount of oil in here, and we'll clean all that up put this in the trash. I'll shut the video down. Well, here, I guess while I got you on here, let's get right to the exciting stuff. And there, look at that. I got my rags. We'll clean this up a little bit. It's not uncommon to have oil, a little bit of oil in your air box because with modern bikes, anything built from probably 1980-ish on up, your crankcase breather goes right into your air box so that those oil fumes don't get into the environment and, and kill the unicorns and rainbows and stuff, you know, that we all love. So it's a common thing. You'll get some oil mist in your air box. And on the lid, there's a little bit here too, which I'll clean off the camera. Um, some people like to modify their motorcycles and take that uh, uh, breather hose out of there so that you're not taking in all of that oil mist. But as you can see, it's not a lot. I clean this thing all up and that's about, yeah, about 12,000 miles worth of stuff because I had this open in Anchorage and at that point I had ridden about 5,000 miles. So let me get her cleaned up and we'll drop the new filter in. We're clean, new filter. It's just as easy as this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just as easy as this. We're in there. Put the lid back on. Repeat the process of chasing down all the screws which I have over here in my magnetic bucket. Let's go ahead and untwist this thing from the mirror. All the screws, put that back. And then here you go, here's how I get my tank held up. Tied it off right there. This is a piece of rope that I found at a camp site in Canada and I had it in my, in my boxes over here, which I will clean up and put back on the bike. But now it's just a uh, reverse process. Put the screws in there, drop the tank down. Of course, I gotta make sure everything's hooked up. I do see one of my uh, tank breather hoses came off, but that's not a big deal. It's right down there. Just gonna hook that back up, drop this down. Maybe I'll clean up a little bit of the stuff underneath there and put her back together. All in all, not a very difficult, uh, difficult job. If you got a Yamaha Super Tenere, Hopefully this was helpful to you. If you don't have a Yamaha Super Tenere, but you have some other motorcycle, hopefully this was helpful to you as well. Or if you just like to watch some guy drop tools and lose screws and stuff, hopefully you had fun watching that too. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're new to my channel, check out some of my other videos. Click that subscribe button. 
Give me a little thumbs up if you'd like. I'd appreciate it. And some comments. That's always good, too. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.